Good evening, church. I can imagine we're all tired and ready for some rest, right? I I just wanted to give you a quick word um, before we depart. Uh, let's just have a word of prayer before we do that. <clears throat> Our Father and our God in heaven, Lord, we thank you once again for your love and your mercy toward us. Father, as we have reached the end of this day and uh, we are blessed by the events that have uh, gone on throughout it, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to bless us throughout this camp meeting. Father, we ask that uh, all that we have heard and uh, experienced would settle into our minds and our hearts that we may bring glory and honor to you. Father, let us go to the ends of the earth to proclaim the message of truth so that we can see the coming of our Savior in the clouds of glory. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's, it's no secret that we are quickly heading to the time of the end. <clears throat> you look around in our world, things are getting more chaotic by the moment. Events are going to happen and they're gonna happen rapidly and we need to be prepared. In Hebrews chapter three and verse 12 and 13, this is what it says. It says, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Knowing that we're on the precipice of the heavenly Canaan, it's time that we draw near together. It's time that we be on our guard and that we put off sin. Amen. For there's a time quickly approaching. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 11, that time is illustrated as, as thus. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. There's a time that's coming when probation will close. And I believe that that time is rapidly approaching. None of us know when our name will come before the bar of God. None of us. But it's advantageous for us to be prepared, for us to receive what God has to give us while it is called today. In Mark chapter 13, verse 28 to 31, it says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The word of God will stand still. It will stand firm and it will accomplish what he setteth out to do. Here's the question. Are we prepared? Are we prepared? Continuing in Mark chapter 13, it says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man 
is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the crow cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. What time is being spoken of here? Let's go to the spirit of prophecy. In the second volume of the testimonies, page 190, paragraph one, this is what it says. Jesus left us a word. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. We are waiting and watching for the return of the master, who is to bring the morning, as coming suddenly, he finds us sleeping. And the question is asked, what time is here referred to? Not to the revelation of Christ in the clouds of heaven to find a people asleep. No. But to his return, from his ministration in the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, when he lays off his priestly attire and clothes himself with garments of vengeance. And when the mandate goes forth, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. When Jesus ceases to plead for man, the cases of all are forever decided. This is the time of reckoning with his servants. To those who have neglected the preparation of purity and holiness, which fits them to be waiting ones to welcome their Lord, the sun sets in gloom and darkness and rises not again. Probation closes. Christ's intercession ceases in heaven. This time finally comes suddenly upon all. And those who have neglected to purify their souls by obeying the truth are found sleeping. You know, one of the biggest issues that I've come across in this movement is the argument over who the king of the north was. And you know what I found? And this is not for all, but most of the people who are arguing this matter are arguing it to try to set a time for the close of probation. Because they say, if we know who the king of the north is, then we know at that time when whatever happens to the king of the north happens, then Michael shall stand up. Right? So once we have that information... We know when probation closes. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you, when we when should we be ready? Now. Now is the time to be ready. They became weary of waiting and watching. They became indifferent in regard to the coming of their master. They longed not for his appearing and thought there was no need of such continued persevering watching. They had been disappointed in their expectations and might be again. They concluded that there was time enough yet to arouse. They would be sure not to lose the opportunity of securing an earthly treasure. It would be safe to get all of this world they could. And in securing this object, they lost all anxiety and interest in the appearing of the master. They became indifferent and careless as though his coming were yet in the distance. 
But while their interest was buried up in their worldly gains, the work closed in the heavenly sanctuary, and they were unprepared. If such had only known that the work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary would close so soon, how differently would they have conducted themselves? How earnestly would they have watched? The master, anticipating all this, gives them timely warning in the command to watch. You know, as I've had the privilege of uh, being with the kids during family time, I asked the kids one question today. If you knew Jesus was coming tomorrow, what would you do differently? What some of you say? Repent, right? Some of y'all said run. <laughs> but here's the thing. The answer should be simple. I would do nothing different. That should be our answer, right? Because we should be prepared at any moment. He distinctly states that the suddenness of his coming. He does not measure the time, lest we shall neglect a momentary preparation and in our indolence look ahead to the time when we think he will come and defer the preparation. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not. Yet this foretold uncertainty and sadness at last fails to arouse us from stupidity to earnest wakefulness and to quicken our watchfulness for our expected master. Those not found waiting and watching are finally surprised in their unfaithfulness. The master comes and instead of being ready to open unto him immediately, they are locked in worldly slumber and are lost at last. In this time, we need to give serious consideration to the work in the earth and the sanctuary above and not turn back. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37 to 39. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believeth to the saving of the soul. A false sense of security in this time will lead to spiritual fatality. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 10. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have what? No pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked do what? Turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die? O house of Israel. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he shineth or sinneth. Verse 13, when I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely die, surely live, if he trust in his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered. 
but for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walked in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Understand this. God is a merciful God. He is a patient God. He is a loving God, a kind and caring God, and he is waiting patiently for us. What are we waiting for? We have a true duty in these last days. Great Controversy, page 88, or I'm sorry, 486, paragraph 3. How solemn is the thought, day after day passing into eternity, bears its birth of records for the books of heaven. Words once spoken, deeds once done, can never be recalled. Angels have registered both the good and the evil. The mightiest conqueror upon the earth cannot call back the record of even a single day. Our acts, our words, even our most secret motives, all have their weight in deciding our destiny. <laughs> For weal or woe. Though they may be forgotten by us, they will bear their testi testimony to justify or to condemn. In the judgment, the use made of every talent will be scrutinized. How have we employed the capital lent us from heaven? Will the Lord at his coming receive his own with usury? Have we improved the powers entrusted us in hand and heart and brain? to the glory of God and the blessing of the world? How have we used our time, our pen, our voice, our money, our influence? What have we done for Christ in the person of the poor, the afflicted, the orphan, or the widow? God has made us the depository of his holy word. What have we done with the light and the truth given us to make men wise unto salvation. No value is attached to a mere profession of faith in Christ. Only the love which is shown by works is counted genuine. Yet it is love alone which in the sight of heaven makes any act of value. Whether whatever is done from love, however small it may appear in the estimation of men, is accepted and rewarded of God. So here's our duty. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch on to prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hospitality one toward another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. In the Ministry of Healing, page 143, paragraph 2, this is what it says. The world needs today what it needed 1,900 years ago, a revelation of Christ. A great work of reform is demanded, and it is only through the grace of Christ that the work of restoration, physical, mental, spiritual, can be accomplished. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence, then bade them follow me. There is a need of coming close to the people by personal effort. If left time 
were given to sermonizing and more time were spent in personal ministry, greater results would be seen. The poor are to be relieved, the sick cared for, the sorrowing and the bereaved comforted, the ignorant instructed, the inexperienced counseled. We are to weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. Accompanied by the power of persuasion, the power of prayer, the power of the love of God, this work will not, cannot be without fruit. Notice Jesus' commission to the disciples. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 8. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go into the way of who? The Gentiles. And into any city of the Samaritan he enter not, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Twenty one letters of manuscripts. Letter 34, 1906, paragraph 21. This is what it says in closing. The sacred commission given us is to work for all nations. To turn sinners from iniquity is to be the great object of the followers of Christ. In various ways, this work is to be done. In our camp meetings, a much more decided effort is to be put forth to accomplish this work. Short discourses right to the point are to be given. And those who are who hear are to be called to make a decision. The laborers are to be fervent in spirit. In spirit. During the meeting, our periodicals are to be distributed and sold. Let all strive together to reach the object Christ has set before us. The gospel is to be translated into every tongue and is to be preached to every creature. The divine presence of Christ will ever be the true workers enlightening their minds as they open the scriptures to others. All who reach out for the Lord Jesus in their prayers, seeking for wisdom and efficiency, will be given success in their endeavors to win souls to righteousness. They will be God's light bearers, shining amidst the darkness of this world. As we prepare for the close of probation, the preparation is simple. We just have to remember what Christ did and do likewise. The author says Christ mingled with men as one who desired their good, then bade them follow me. It's not enough for us to have the truth. And it's okay if we desire more of it. But brothers and sisters, let's not forget that there is a dying world out there that needs the truth that we have. So go ye therefore, Amen. Amen. Our most loving Father and our God in heaven, Lord, you have given us our duty. We know that which we have to do. Father, it is written, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And Lord, we desire to please you. We desire to have faith to carry this message to the ends of the earth. Father, we know that some will hear and some will forbear. But Lord, our job is to plant the seed. And Father, I pray that we remember that, that that is our job. Let's not be the convicting spirit for another. 
let's just do the work that Christ has given us. Lord, we know that the end is nigh upon us. And Father, before the courts of heaven, we want written by our name, saved by the blood of the Lamb. Father, as we seek to preach this truth, both near and abroad, give us of your spirit to carry forward this work. Help us to be unified in truth and in love that others may see and know that this is the body of Christ. Father, we ask these things in the precious name of your Son, our beloved Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.